Okay, we'll get started with the hardware first. Here we have the Skater Pack 350. You can go ahead and loosen the two screws here to pull the cover off so you go through all the hardware under the hood as well. Uh, your Skater Pack might look a little bit different. It probably doesn't have this radio uh, connection here. Um, this Skater Pack has a built in radio option. Um, it's okay if yours doesn't. We're not going to go through that today. Go ahead and pull the cover off. You see the radio there. Um, when you pull the cover off, we're going to start at the top here where it says model 5209. That's the uh, board model of the Skater Pack 350 that we have. Beside that is the analog input. Um, the analog inputs can be current or voltage. You just uh, uh, select the dip switches here. Next to that is the analog outputs. The analog outputs are always located here and you can wire them here, but they may not be enabled unless you have the analog output daughter board mounted here, which we don't. So just um, ignore that for now. Next is the LED power button. This is how you can turn on and off the LEDs as well as reset the skater pack. Next to that is all the LEDs. The first one is the power LED. So when you turn on power, this light will turn on. Next is the run LED. So when the program's running in the system, the run LED will be on. Next is the stat LED. Um, so if you have any bad statuses in the skater pack, this will uh, notify you. Next to that is the force LED. If you force any logic in your system, the force light will be on. Uh, next to that is all the communication LEDs, so you have your Ethernet port or your LAN port, as well as your three serial ports, COM1, COM2, and COM3. Below that we have a couple stickers, one's the MAC address, one is the control ID. The control ID will be used for updating things like the real full licenses, as well as you could get this control ID license um, via software when you're connected to the, to the SCADA pack as well. Right here is the serial number. Uh, the serial number and the control ID have now been combined. They're now B numbers, so this might look a little bit different on the skate pack that you have. Next to that is your expansion module ribbon cable that will be inputted here. You plug it in here and you can add more I.O. Um, obviously, if the controller doesn't have as enough I.O. as you want, you can just keep adding expansion modules. Um, and that's how you add it. Next to that is the RAM battery. The RAM battery will keep the program in case you ever lose uh, power. Below that are two of your serial ports, COM2 and COM3. Uh, obviously, the RJ45 ports, COM2 can be 232 or 485. There's dip switches here to change that. And COM3 can only be 232. The one benefit of using COM3 is you can also um, power a 5 volt keypad display on COM3 as well. So, next to that, you have your metal uh, RJ45 port here. That's your Ethernet or LAN port. Next to that is you have COM1, which is your 45 only serial port. Typically you see the multivariables like the 4102s plugged into there. Next to that you have your counter inputs. Uh, one of your counter inputs is the low frequency counter and that's what we'll be using today. Um, as well as two high frequency counters. The high frequency counters can either have uh, internal or external amplifier and be used as counter inputs. Next to that is your USB port. Your USB port will be used for data logging. So you could plug in a USB flash drive and log data, data to that. And that's where you put it in there. This wouldn't connect to a laptop to do configuration. That's what the USB B port would be for. The USB B port is where you just plug in from your laptop to the SCADA pack. It does use a USB B cable, which is the same cable as a printer. So a lot of people call it printer cable, but that's where you connect to configure it. As well as you have your DIO. Uh, don't get these confused with DIs and DOs from other SCADA packs are wired a bit differently, so be careful of that. As well as in the program, make sure you're only using it as a DI or a DO respectively. Next to that is the power input, so your power comes here, as well as that's fused right here, just for safety. Um, obviously, we're using this IO simulator board right beside us here. So we have four analog inputs here, which are wired to the four analog inputs of the SCADA pack. We have one counter input here that is wired to the counter input of the SCADA pack. And then we have four switches, which are wired to the four first DIOs here on the SCADA pack. Before we get into the software, we're gonna go ahead and factory boot the SCADA pack. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the cover back on. Once you have the cover back on, you can now hold down this LED power button here and plug in the skater pack. Once you've done that, you'll notice that the stat light is off. Eventually the stat light will become solid for the first time. And then that, that indicates that we're in a service boot. If we let go now, we would have service boot the skater pack. So we're gonna wait a little bit longer until it starts blinking and then keep holding it. When it's blinking, we know that, that 
it will be in a cold boot mode. So if we let go when it's blinking, like right now, we would have done a cold boot to the skater pack. But we're gonna keep waiting until it's solid again. When it's solid for the second time, we know that that's a factory boot and we could go ahead and pull our finger off the LED power button. So now it's solid for the second time. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull my finger off. I'm gonna wait a couple seconds here. I'm just gonna be monitoring that stat light as I wait. And when that stat light is now off, I can now plug into the skater pack and everything's set back to factory settings. So now you can go ahead and open up Telepay Studio. It should look like the screen in front of you here. We're gonna start in the top left on the green button there, select it. This is where you create a new program, open an existing program and save your current program, as well as it lists all the current or recent projects that you've been working on. So it's a quick access to open any recent projects. There is a quick button to save, read and write up here, as well as a home and configure tab. If you select the configure tab everything that's listed up here is also in your tree view down here so we're just going to stay on the home tab on the home tab there's a read button to read the program that's currently in the SCADA pack write the program to a SCADA pack validate the current program you're working on in telepay studio change the controller so if you want to change the type of controller you want to write to this is where you select it here there's a run button this is to run the program in the SCADA pack a debug button. Um, this helps you debug the SCADA pack, troubleshoot, or test any of your logic. There's a stop button. This will stop the program from running in the SCADA pack. The offline button here is grayed out. So because we are offline, that's why it is grayed out. There's a button here to edit online, so to make some online edits, as well as there's a monitor button to troubleshoot or um, test any of your logic while you're online in monitoring. Next to that is your PC communication settings. So depending how you want to connect over Ethernet or serial or USB, you'd set it all up here, as well as once you uh, select the protocol, you configure some additional settings. Below that is all your DMP settings right here. And then if we move over to the tree view here, you have your project name, it says new project. It's hard to see what it says up here. So oftentimes I look down here to see which project I'm working on in case I have a couple uh, projects open at the same time. Below that is your register assignment. So this is where all your IOs would land into registers. So this is where you'd set that up. Next is your tag management. So on the SCADA pack, everything lives in a register. So you can add, add a tag name to it so you know what's what. Next to that is your register editor. You can build custom groups to help troubleshoot or monitor when you're online certain groups of registers here, as well as they pre-build a couple groups for you. One of those groups is forced registers, one of them is tagged registers, and one of them is used registers. So every tag that is, or every register that's used in your program will be here. Every register that's tagged in your program will be listed here, and anything that's currently forced will be listed there. Next is your serial tab. So this is where you set up all your serial settings. So depending on what kind of SCADA pack, you could have multiple COM ports. That's where you have set it up there. We are currently using SCADA pack 350, so we have IP settings because it does have an Ethernet port. You'd set it all up here. Uh, the store and forward functionality is listed down here, as well as the DMP settings. And then we move into the actual controller hardware, which we currently have a uh, SCADA pack 350 selected. You could change the firmware here, load a C program to the SCADA pack, check the program status. Um, use the flash loader. The controller security is listed down here. This is really important because the SCADA packs are locked coming out of the factory now so you have to go in here and disable that lock as well as there's file management this is where you can write your configuration file to the SCADA pack so you have it later so you have all the information when you read it from the SCADA pack you have your uh, clock you can set it all up here and then you have initialize to initialize your SCADA pack so we have a configuration view here and obviously you can see it changes depending on what you click on Next to that is your network canvas here. So this is where you drag and drop all your function blocks or coils or whatever you're programming into your interface right here. Next to that is your palette. So this is where you get all those function blocks and coils and stuff from for programming is on your palette. And then right at the bottom, you have your diagnostic view. So if, you have, if you're ever running into any issues, you can check the diagnostic window and it really helps you troubleshoot everything.